to be here, kid. You gotta just go for it. Don't think about what comes after or what came before. You just gotta bend your knees, take a deep breath, and jump. And you might think, what if I fall? Well, what if you don't? Ladies and gentlemen. Hey, I'm David S. with LTD Media. I'm here again with the Now You Know podcast. This is episode two. I've got another good friend of mine here with me. His name is Sammy. I couldn't pronounce his last name right, so I'm going to let him cover that whole piece just so I don't slaughter it because I'm really bad with rolling my R's. Um, you want to introduce yourself, man? Yeah, I won't roll my R's either, though, so <laughs> make you feel better. Uh, Sammy Arroyo. Say it again. Sammy Arroyo. You guys hear that? I'm still not going to try it because I'm not very good. But Give it a shot. You sure? Uh, I, 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 boyo. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. I I've okay. heard a lot worse. <laughs> <laughs> you own a company, man, here in town, right? I do. What's it called? I do, excuse me. Uh, Samson's Grounds Maintenance. So, I mean, that's it long, but we kind of shortened it up as of recently to SGM just to kind of shifted gears there a little bit on what we do, so... Um, I didn't want like, I guess our name maintenance to deter people from what we're doing now. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So landscape, uh, design, doing a lot of paperwork, uh, we're specializing in artificial turf right now. Um, I think that's our main squeeze right now is artificial turf. Artificial turf. Yeah. We've been, uh, kind of subcontracted out with a lot of companies, I'm not going to name any right now, but, uh, you know, we've been working pretty closely with a few and that's kind of our main squeeze right now. That's awesome. That's good that you do that. I got a story on that, man. Um, last winter I purchased some turf. I was like, Hey, I had this bright idea. I'm going to put in my own turf without hiring a professional. You're already laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so the cutting and everything, like doing the, like the, the platform thing really well, putting it in was awesome. It looks so good. It's right next to my pool. It looks really killer. Um, it starts heating up and I get a call from my wife. It's uh, probably, we're not even in a real summer yet. It's probably like May-ish. Mm-hmm. She's like, hey, I think the turf's melting. I'm like, I'm like, what? What are you talking about? She's like, yeah, I think it's melting. I'm like, oh, you're crazy. She's like, no, it's like, <laughs> it's like all like gooey. It's really weird. I had to get off the turf. So I go home. Sure enough, man, it's melting. Yeah. I'm like, what did I do? Well, you got a window glaring? I got two huge windows yeah, glaring. There you go. And I didn't know. <laughs> so like, I didn't look. Before I put the turf in, see where the the sun rays were bouncing and where they were landing. I ha- I I honestly had no clue about that at all. Yeah, and I mean to be honest, don't feel bad about that because I didn't learn that for you know, it took me. I didn't know that either. So yeah, yeah, don't feel bad about that. <laughs> but had you know what I mean? Had we been doing this and advertising it, you know, when you were doing it, you could have called me. I would have gave yeah. you a yeah. whatever you needed, you know, to tell you <laughs> yeah shades and whatnot. But <laughs> so how what ended up happening? Oh, it's still there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I hope it makes it through the summer. It got murdered. It's all burnt. There's like stripes. It like made this design where there's like bare, like just pieces of turf and it's a mess. So, well, I'm going to end up uh, contacting you after yeah, this podcast I know a guy, is over. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's somebody else here I want to mention that's helping us with all of our sound stuff. She's in the background. She also has a name that I'm going to get right this time on the last podcast. I said it wrong. Nereida. Is that right? Yeah. I said it right. So she's running all the sound. Um, and she's advising that she wants us to bring our mics a little closer to okay. us. So you good? Yeah. All right, cool. Um, yeah, she's here helping us out. She does a phenomenal job of keeping the sound where it needs to be and everything. And we'll get past that. But anyway, so the turf thing, that was my uh, issue that I wanted to share with you. And I'm <laughs> definitely going to pull you to my backyard pretty soon here. So you start this this company. What's going on in your life before that? How do we get to this point where you're running your own show you're your own boss and you're and you you likely have employees that are getting paid and you're taking care of people and their families how do we get here like what what happened before this um i mean <clears throat> honestly it was an accident um so i started at the mines i was at the mines for probably about five years or so um i loved the people i worked with um i hated the schedule i just uh you know it was just putting me in a bad spot in my life being there. Um, you know, it's not for everybody, but, uh, you know, I was ruining relationships with, you know, my family and everything just cause I was an unhappy individual. So, I mean, years ago I had, dude, you have no idea. Like I have notebooks full of business ideas. 
um, that I wanted to, I knew I wanted to get out of the mines. I didn't know how I was going to do it though. I had no idea. So, um, man, uh, it ended up, I ended up getting another position out there. They gave me Monday through Friday off by 3 PM every day. I couldn't complain at all. Yeah. The only thing that sucked is I took probably about a $700 pay cut a month. So Ouch. yeah, that was a, a, you know, but from that point on, I was so set on getting a schedule. I liked to living a, you know, I, I'm, you know, graveyard shift was not for me. Yeah. Um, so once I did that, I just had to figure out how to make up that $700 a month. Like I like toys. I like dirt bikes. I like vehicles. So there was no way taking that pay cut was going to pay for my, you know, living expenses and having fun. So I started pulling weeds like that was, you know, my dad always had us clean the yard as young kids. And uh, that was something I knew how to do. And uh, I kind of just started doing it for friends that didn't have time to do it. And I did. So I'd get off work at three o'clock and either had to go do estimates and or pull weeds. Um, and the next thing you know, clients are asking, hey, can you trim trees? And uh, like, yeah, but there's kind of a science behind it. And you need, you know what I mean? To get taller trees and whatnot, you got to get the correct tool. So it was kind of like a yes thing. But how am I going to like realistically, it was like, yeah, I can do that. But how am I going to do it? So I had to figure out how to get all the tools, trailers, all this junk. Next thing I know. Um, I mean, I guess long story short, uh, I was getting too busy to go back to the mines, if that makes sense. Like my schedule was just so filled up. And one day I sat down and uh, I was looking at it and I'm like, dang, like I'm making more money from 3 PM till the sun goes down than I am from seven to three o'clock. Like this is a way out of a place that I don't want to be at anymore. You crunch the numbers. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I was like, dude, like, and I, I'll tell you what, the day that somebody called me back, I was on lunch break. It's funny. I was on lunch break and uh, somebody called me back and I thought I was psycho for bidding. It was a huge job, man. And to be honest, I underbid it. I bid it at $700 and it probably was, it, it was a huge job. I bit off more than I could chew on that one. But the minute that they called me and said, Hey, uh, let's do it. Yeah. I was so like, taken away like dang like people are willing to pay for my service you know um and my buddy next to me was like go put in your two weeks right now i'm like what do you mean like he's like dude you you know this is a good amount of money keep doing it continue to do it so i just had to believe in myself like you know i can continue to do this i did it once why not do it again and you know what i mean it, it's not always all about like the money but at this at the same time you need money to live you know yeah, what i mean yeah. and if you're replacing your income uh there was nothing to it, man. I, I took his advice and uh, I went up and I went and talked to both of my bosses right then and there on a lunch break. And I was like, hey, uh, I don't know how to do this, but I'm breaking up with you guys. <laughs> and they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah. Um, they knew I was, you know, they knew I had a side hustle going. And it just, to be honest, grew really quickly. And, um, you know, I, re I, I don't know what I'm doing still, like business wise. <laughs> like, I know how to do the work, um, but there's a lot of, uh, you just kind of try to keep up with, with what's coming to you. And, um, yeah. you know, basically my thing was trying to get back to people as quickly as I could. Mm -hmm. Not, you know what I mean? Just good customer service, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, I don't know. I think I'm going off on a tangent here, but is no. that, you know, like that's, no. I think that's where I got to where I'm at now. It was it happened on an accident, picking weeds all by myself. And the next thing you know, I needed help. So started reaching out for help. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I got a, a really good crew and uh, they're solid. Yeah, you know, nice. We're we're uh, making some big moves this year. So, a good uh, mentor in my life in the business world told me that running your own business is like being uh, kind of like a firefighter alone in a where there's a bunch of spot fires starting, and you got to go around and put out all these fires. You're constantly doing that because in the business world, you have these new situations, these new scenarios coming up business wise that you've never seen before, and you got to figure it out. Yeah, because you're you're the guy that your your crew looks to now. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I can relate to you when you're like, yeah, there's still things that come up where I'm like, I don't. How are we gonna make this happen? But you find a way. And yeah, that's kind of where that's how you end up in that role, you know. And it's really trippy. But it's and fun, huh? I mean, it, it, it is, man. And some people are like, you get so lucky with with, and it's like, man, that's. I don't really believe in luck. Some situations, if some, you know, I almost die in a car accident, I managed to evade it. Like that's <laughs> yeah. a, you know, that's luck to me. But yeah. to me, this isn't luck. It's just, you know. A, combina a combination of being prepared to take on something new and the timing of it, like being prepared when that, you know, when that door opens, like yeah. don't shut it. Yeah. Like just, uh, you know, open it up, see what's inside. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? And just be truthful. So you're getting yourself into something. Yeah, you know, I've done it. I've told clients like that's beyond me. You know what yeah. I mean? But to be honest, I didn't do pavers and I didn't do artificial turf. Um, it took me a year to start doing turf. Actually, I went and talked. He's a good friend of mine now. I talked to him a lot, you know, throughout the day. And uh, he wanted me to do turf really badly. He's like, dude, you can do it. It's not rocket science, but I put it off for so long. But the minute that, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. I don't know if that's loud when I it's clear okay. my throat. No, but, it's uh, all genuine part of what we're doing here. So, But uh, yeah, when one client asked me to do it, I didn't know how to do it. So I went back over there. I'm like, look, they really want it done. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. I told them I'll give them a huge discount if they let me try it out. Yeah. And uh, that door opened. I peeked in and... Uh, you know, I saw something that I wasn't sure of, and you know, I'm not telling you anybody to go, you know, do anything psycho, but crazy, you know, like, but within reason, you know, mm-hmm. if you know, take those chances, do it, like, jump, I, yeah. I think doing something every day that scares, you know, do something every day that scares you, like, doesn't have to be physical. It just has, to, just get out of your comfort zone. Love it. When you're out of your comfort zone, you're growing. Love it. Love it. <clears throat> How many people you got in your crew right now? I got four. Nice. So, four people. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, there's more than four. You got you got the four plus everything that they've got attached to them. You know what I mean? Yeah. If exactly. you look at it that way, um, you're, you're going to be so successful if you look at it that way. You're not just supporting them. You're supporting this whole system that's around them. And it's it's crazy when you really think about the big picture. You're like, they got their cow. own lives too. Yeah. You know? You're like, holy cow. That, like, I'm helping that life grow Like with what you're doing. The step you took by taking that risk and jumping, now you have these people that are growing themselves and you're helping with that yeah it's, it's just incredible feeling it and uh, I, it, it really is man and it's rewarding to see uh how far each of the guys have come um yeah. because they were all fully capable you know yeah. as you know was myself of doing stuff um but none of them really had a background in this at all mm-hmm. um and just man we we got really fortunate to meet up with really good people who pointed us in the right direction helped us out when we needed help and these guys just man just a sponge just absorbed it and uh you know for a while there i was trying to be on the job site with them because yeah. i was so scared that something was going to go wrong and you know mm-hmm. it's just a scary thing when you have a team you know you just got to have trust within them and trust that they're doing you right and they're there to help you yeah um because you'll know when they're not and i've already been through that i've had to get rid of people i didn't you know some were friends and it wasn't fun but it was just you know business is kind of business and um yeah i mean with the four going back to seeing them grow it's 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 awesome to see that you know yeah and it's not all from me but Mm -hmm. you know i like to think that i played a part in yeah getting them there their knowledge you know i think everybody kind of has to buy into the whole big idea yeah to work i mean that's just the only because it's not all rainbows and sunshine man um you know they're there's times where you know we're going a week without work or a week and a half schedule you know that happened recently schedule got really screwed up Mm -hmm. i didn't have my ducks in a row and you know that was on on me but uh for me i had stuff that i want done to my house so it was like hey guys uh if you guys want to continue to work come work at my house It's, it's optional i would like to get this done but um yeah just try to keep the ball rolling for him yeah that was like one of those fires that popped up Oh, yeah, you're like, oh, I gotta, I gotta address this real quick. And that one, yeah, man, that one, you know, it, I'm not gonna lie, as a small business owner, that it gets scary sometimes, yeah. like when that happens. And uh, I'll tell you what, though, um, I, you know, not too long ago, I was really upset with what was going on and how long it was. You know, I was just, I had the work in front of me, um, and you know, there's always somebody that's gonna be cheaper than you, and I was getting really, uh, like my bids were coming in and people were coming in just killing me on them. Like people, you know what I mean? They didn't have a crew. It wasn't anything like that, but it got really scary to where, uh, I thought we weren't going to have any work and I was questioning, like, can I do this? Like, can I, can I really do this? Yeah. And, uh, you know, our mutual friend, Cody, real good friend. I called with him and talked with him a little bit and, uh, he knows that's not where my head's at. That's, you know what I mean? I'm not a quitter, but, um, Man, don't quit. That's all I can say. Because literally the very, very next day, like, man, I'm, you know, we've had to reschedule how many times already? Mm-hmm. Because I just, you know, don't quit. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, again, going off, but. No, it's good. No. The but, listeners want to hear this stuff. This is this is real. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's as real as it gets. Um, 
Because there's people going through this struggle right now that you're talking about in a different way, right? They're not, they're not always going to be the same, but they're going through this kind of stuff right now. And hearing this from somebody that's gone through it and has experience under their belt, it could help them. Yeah. It could be that change. You're like, man, this guy was talking about when this happened and he was kind of freaking out a little bit, but he had, he had somebody there to talk to. And that kind of brings me to my next point on this conversation we're having is you mentioned Cody. Cody is a great guy. Uh, I won't say his last name out of respect for him in this yeah, thing, absolutely. but uh, I got to see that guy not too long ago. He came by from his new gig that he got where he's making. Oh, you're lucky. A ton of You hear of that, money. Cody? You yeah. hear that? You go, <laughs> he was supposed to stop by my house. He's got a big old beard now. And <laughs> yeah. He uh, came and got some food from the, the mm-hmm. bakery over here and uh, he's doing really well. And I chat with him a lot and uh, Cody, yeah. I'm joking. You know, he'll, he'll hear this, but uh, <laughs> I'm joking. He knows there's no hard feelings. We talk a lot. So yeah. Yeah, he's, a, he's um, an awesome guy. And he's busy himself. Yeah. You know, and he's somebody, uh, I'm glad to see where he's at because he's a definition of, I've told him this ever since I've known him. Mm-hmm. He's he's just, uh, he's capable of a ridiculous, I don't even know. He's capable of anything, let's put it that way. Yeah. His <laughs> mind is something else. Like, he's like a specimen as far as minds. But, well, maybe maybe I'll get Cody here. That'd be cool. That'd be, that'd be cool. That'd be yeah. Cool. But anyways, so like I was saying in this conversation, it kind of brings me to my next point, influences. Who are some of your influences and or mentors that have helped you get where you're at? Oh, man, there's a lot. Cody's definitely one of them. Um, man, uh, I listened to a lot of Andy Frisella a okay. lot. Um, I listened, I, I'd listened to Gary V for a while. Um, but if I'm being honest, man, it, it's got to be a majority of Andy Frisella. Um, I'm huge into music and uh, I got a, one of my favorite rappers. Uh, his name is Kasky and he's not super huge. Hold on, hold on. The one that just did the album with Yellow yep, Wolf? Yep. Yep. Oh, man. I've been already, a problem. I can't stop listening to that song. I started listening to the album today. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. I mean, anyway, sorry up. to interrupt you, bro. That, no, I you're, to, no I, I'm, I'm happy to talk about it, dude. Um, it, it's cool because uh, you know music very well. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, when people talk about him, I get so hyped on it because it's like, dude, he's so... I mean, do you agree he's underrated? Absolutely. Like he's... So you can see where my motivation comes from. Yeah. Like in a lot of, if you've, li- if you're familiar with this music, a lot of it is just hustle, motivation. Um, man, there's just so many like punchlines that he's got. Like one that sticks in my head all the time is, uh, I'm a, I'm a, sorry, I'm over here tripping on my words right now. Uh, <laughs> now I can't even think of it. I just lost it. Wow. It, it's, uh, addicted to progress. Like, you know, that's something right there that's, um, like we mentioned a little bit earlier, addicted to prog, you know, just growing. Don't be scared to get out of your comfort zone. And yeah, you know, that's something that I feel that I am because, you know, I'm always on to the next thing and, you mm-hmm. know, trying to figure out, you know, what we can. I, I've just always been the dude that tries to make it work, you know, yeah. and uh, I'm not it's not easy for me. If I give up on something, then, man, that's kind of. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard for me to give up. It had to be bad for you to just go, I can't do this. Yeah, and uh, sometimes you just got to get out of your head, man. But to be honest, that time that, uh, you know, influences Caskey is huge. Uh, we're giving, you know, I don't mean to make this whole podcast about him, but yeah, Andy Frisella and Caskey, those are two things that, uh, you know, if I'm in a struggle, you know, because I can't talk to these people. You know, I mean, I don't know them, mm-hmm. but they've got stuff to say. You put on their podcast or you put on their music and just just get out of your head, Yeah, you know, and those are huge influences for me right there. Um, I mean, I, I could keep going off, too. I mean, I got a good friend of mine who started a plumbing business after uh, I started my business, and, you know, at one point I thought I was doing good, and, man, these boys are killing it, and, like, yeah. those are influences to me, too. Like, I, I reached out to him this week. and was like, hey, man, you want to get lunch next week? Like, I want to see what's on your mind. I want to know where you're at. Like you guys are growing at a ridiculous rate and Mm -hmm. you know, I'm not even riding your, you know, I'm not even nipping at your feet here. Like I want to get, you know? Yeah. So it's funny how that turns out, man. They know what they're doing. They're good people and uh, they kill it. Fusion plumbing. Fusion plumbing. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen them on Facebook and stuff popping up in my feed. Yeah. I think I know, I I know somebody uh, that I used to hang out with back in the day that I pretty sure is either part of the company or something. It's a, it's a lady. I I don't remember her name, but. Um, yeah, I see them popping up and I, I could agree. I, I think I saw from like when they first started and it kind of looks like they kind of like grown like a fleet. Yeah. Almost. Uh, I was like, okay. Yeah. They're taking okay. care of business, man. They yeah. really are. And, it, uh, you know, th- you know, one of the owners, Sean, um, he's really a very motivated individual, like on his own. And, you know, I see him on social media and stuff and, uh, 
he's very good inspiration and motivation for me too, man. He cool. he's he's a good cat. So it's good to see them grow, man. Good, it really good. is. How's your Perrier? I like it, man. Um, I really do. As I get older, I'm not going to lie, when I was young, I couldn't stand this carbonated mm-hmm. water because I just wanted soda. <laughs> but, you know. Still trying to get a sponsorship from Perrier. It's really delicious. Let's make it a – let's uh, – not too bad I don't got Tito's here. I'll, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get the Tito's, man, and <laughs> we can we can hook each other up. For sure, for sure. But – so, I mean, what what about you though, man? I've been asking, I've been wanting to know about you and your, uh, if you're willing to talk about it, your social, not your social, but your, uh, your media. I mean, that's yeah. what you do. Yeah. I mean. What do you want to know? Everything, man. Everything. I, yeah. I mean. <laughs> it would take us a while for me to cover everything, but, um, in a nutshell, I run a, I own a social media marketing company. We do content creation, do videos, ads, um, uh, websites invoicing systems bank like all all that online banking integration stuff so basically you. everything that i need <laughs> <laughs> hey yeah. we'll, we'll talk after this and see if i can help you i love helping local small businesses um i've always been about serving other people mm-hmm. it was really a a goal of mine was to grow up and i was telling nereda they say it right yes. i was telling you her you get her nickname yeah. man <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. a it's a pretty name i just keep messing up um yeah. I was telling her that I was like, I was sitting in here today and I'm like, this is crazy. I, was like, I pictured this years and years ago. Mm-hmm. And I'm at that point now where I'm like, man, this is really, really It's coming happening. to yeah. fru- fru- what's that word I'm trying fruition? to say? Fruition? Fruition right now, yeah. Spell it. Uh, if F-R-U-I-T-I-O-N? <laughs> fru- fruition? Let's see. Hold on. Hold on. Let me Google it. <laughs> I was like, maybe, maybe he'll take you know a you stab can ask, at it. You know you can ask Siri how to spell it, right? <laughs> I'm on. Ju- damn it. Make me feel old. <laughs> I'm just joking. Did I recently just barely man, started catching? You spelled catch it right. You spelled it right. F-R-U-I-T-I-O-N. Fun fact, man. Uh, I was in the spelling bee every year, but I never won because I always choked when it came down. And I, the closest I ever got was second. Damn. You know what? I, you know, if I can say something, I think that's why I want to win so bad within my company because I wrestled forever, too. Yeah. And all the tournaments, man, like, I just, uh, I really, um. Back then, I, I was always wanting to have fun rather than work hard. Like, I had the talent. I mean, yeah. it was it was apparent. I just didn't work nearly as hard as everybody else in the room. And uh, I regret that so bad. The best I ever got at a tournament was second. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a winning record in high school, but my, you know, it was just nothing to brag about. Dude, I could tell you all this all day long and no, you know what I mean? There's no proof to back it up. <laughs> other, uh, other, there's no first place. I have no first place medals. I got second, thirds, fourths, and you know, stuff like that. But, uh, I think that's kind of what motivates me too. If I can be an inspiration for myself, how you yeah. asked me earlier, like, yeah. Yeah. You got that competitive spirit. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that comes from the early you know, in your youth competing in sports, right? Getting challenged, getting beat. Yeah. Nothing motivates me more than getting beat. And I think you probably say close to the same thing. When you get beat because now you're thinking, how did I get beat? Why did I get beat? That's and my when it, You know what it comes down to is you. Yeah. You. Uh, I'll, I'll, guarantee, I'll, I'll tell you what, man. A lot of the times, 90% of the time, I beat myself. Yeah. Like, um... A lot of my teammates, not even that, just with everything, man. Everything that I've ever lost at, I beat myself. Yeah. And now I'm older, man, I overanalyze everything. So if something doesn't go my way, I, it's kind of a bad habit of mine, but I, I sit and pick it apart for so long. Like, mm-hmm. where did I go wrong? Like, yeah. what could, you know what I mean? It's like, well, if this situation happens, the situation's not happening again. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, dude, I, I hate losing. I mean, losing's a part of life, and it's, and it's a great opportunity to learn. And let's just say I've learned a lot, you know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I want to be number one, man. You of know? course. I've never had that. I still I still try to race dirt bikes. It's very low key. It's, it's you know, I race with the 30-year-olds. No shit. You, ride, yeah. you race dirt bikes? Well, I, I ride a lot avidly still. I haven't raced since last year. There was one last weekend that I wanted to attend. Um, I just... New bike, I'm not in shape for it right now, so I bought a mountain bike. I'm trying to get some cardio going, but I'm planning on doing one next month. That's so, awesome. I didn't know that, man. Yeah, I, uh, that, I was, that was seen, my first I've love. seen you have some, like, had bikes, but, like, I know tons of dudes that get dirt bikes and throw a number on them. And, Ye- yeah. You know, and they don't race. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't know that. That's cool. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, 
everybody's got their story within moto man uh you know everybody's got their unique number and you know yeah. um it's something that was my first love there yeah. you know let and me know when you do your race and where it's at i'll go to that man I'll that'd be cool buy some tickets and, yeah if you, i mean it's sure. like a ten dollar gate fee you got a little bit of a drive but i mean if that's you know that'd be fun for you guys to yeah. not even just for me but just to yeah. be there and you know you can yeah. get some good footage yeah i got to get some some videos and some photos yeah that'd be really cool yeah man and that's you know another thing there's a guy out there that does photos too Mm -hmm. there's another avenue side hustle right there yeah yeah for sure <laughs> you, you take some good media you know you do good media coverage so yeah for sure for sure and we actually do that too man yeah yeah we do <laughs> photos and like you said everything we can to to give that like just brand awareness yeah the biggest thing so do you like do you edit videos too like yep. if somebody gave you something like bits and pieces yep. all right man i got somebody who's asking on facebook earlier today but yeah I wanted to talk to you about that a little yeah. bit first. So yeah, we'll show you a video we just did for a local government um, police department here that we did. And okay, they featured it. They put it on their Facebook and everything. You know what was that? Am I allowed to say the town? Yeah, you or, can say it. Yeah. Um, was that for was that for Marina? Yeah. Okay, dude, I did see that one. That one was super awesome. Shot and edited by this guy. Dude, that was rad. Uh, that was cool, if huh? I can, yeah. Um, yeah, we got a drone and stuff. Too. But uh, you know, I'm I'm acting surprised. I'm not really not surprised, but it was you know it was awesome. <laughs> You know. Well, if you don't know, I just learned about you riding dirt bikes. I wouldn't have yeah, yeah. for sure I mean, said, oh, yeah, he's a dirt, he rides dirt bikes and races. I Yeah, don't don't races. build me up. I try to race. <laughs> Let's put it that way. That's right. So well, we're gonna I'll see get what that happens. number one soon. I'll get that number one on that soon. <laughs> I'm shooting for that. Start stacking trophies. Uh, I'm trying. <laughs> I'd like to. Within your business and everything, we, we've kind of been talking about how we've both been beat. You know, getting beat when we were younger in sports kind of, you know, motivated us to this point even are there any failures that happen within your business that you might want to talk about how you solved it and any triumphs that you think in particular are really awesome that you'd like want to talk about oh man the first big job that we landed was a huge paver job um and we had had the right tools when i went and talked to the guy like we had the right people um, unfortunately, those people that we were really depending on couldn't come through because of their work schedule. Yeah. And uh, we were kind of left with two good friends of mine who are they're still uh, they're still part of the crew. Um, we were kind of left to figure everything else on our own. We had no idea what we we're doing. Twelve hour days. These guys got there at seven. They stayed till seven at night. And it, this was in June, I think. So it wasn't cold by any means. It was quite the opposite yeah, it was a rough summer yeah it, it wasn't <laughs> very uh it wasn't very fun man um everybody tried to keep a good attitude though people were getting frustrated um and we were just running into things you know that we weren't familiar with and we had to figure it out um that was another situation was like man like am i can i am i capable of this like you know um but that hit me so hard i didn't make nearly the amount i lost thousands of dollars let's just say like i lost thousands of dollars yeah. um i didn't dip into the negatives by any mean but it was uh it was not a good it was a punch in the mouth dude yeah. like you know i thought you know i thought i was ready to fight mike tyson and that was not the case dude like that dude knocked me out in the first 30 seconds and it was like whew, you know luckily the the homeowner he was pushing us he was like hey like you know, we need to get this done. And he was a cool cat, but, you know, it, it was kind of a – I understood where he's coming from because we're impeding on his house here for two weeks when we should have been done in a week. Yeah. Um, it was just something that I never wanted to go through again because at the end of it, nobody was really happy. I'm sure my guys were like, dude, do I want to stick around for this? Because this sucks. You know what I mean? Like, this sucks. Mm -hmm. So my whole thing was – my goal was to never let that happen again. And – uh that, I mean, I don't know if I consider that a failure. I consider it more so of a learning lesson, learning to adapt to situations because there were so many things that I didn't know that would make our life easier. And there were several people that, if they're hearing this, they came to our help, which, you know, was awesome yeah. in their downtime. Um, they realized that, uh, man, do you want me just to tell you about it a little bit? Like, Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, for sure. Like, just to put it into perspective, man, we showed up and it was way more than we thought. You know, we, we had to put a wall up and we worked with somebody who does walls. So they were, uh, you know, subcontract contracted out for us. Their schedule changed. So that wall went up halfway done and it just stood there. And we're like, dude, we don't know how to texture this. We don't know how to, we don't know how to do any of this. Wow. 
uh, my other buddy that was trying to help us at the time was uh, he couldn't get out of work like he anticipated. He wanted to take some days off, couldn't do it. We needed him. Um, on top of that, we were supposed to remove a concrete section and we were jackhammering most of it, got it all out. And then we hit a spot of post tension, which you're not supposed to hit like, but it wasn't marked at all, which is huge. So if anything happened to us, I mean, I'm assuming somebody who had a, did that concrete at that house mm -hmm. would be in a lot of trouble for that. Yeah. Um, cause we hit it. Luckily we were able to fix it, but I had to find, you know, I had to make a million calls like, Hey, who does concrete? Who knows about post tension? Can you fix this? So that happened. The wall happened um, where we were supposed to knock out that concrete to put the pavers. He ended up wanting tile. I don't do tile. I, you know, figured out somebody, dude, yeah. there was 300 people on that little job. There's a lot of fires. <laughs> I mean, I would just say it was one big fire. One big fire. Yeah, it, it, one started, big it started fire. off, yeah, in, a, in, in little spots there. But oh, man, man, like that, that would have deterred, I think, a lot of people, um, you know, from continuing to um to pursue this dude my blood pressure is up just from hearing that story man like, I, I can picture it in my head it's so like you explained it so vivid that like all this stuff's going on and i'm just like oh my god man i was i was set to have a a stroke at at 28 <laughs> years old you know and uh oh man. yeah it was uh it was a rough one man um but like i said you know i had a lot of people that came to my rescue um and I mean, I guess something that I took away from that, too, is just, you know, the big stuff's going to come. You know what I mean? It is. And this was my first, like, big, big job. If I'd been a little bit more patient with the planning instead of seeing these dollar signs, like, mm -hmm. it, you know, been a little, you know, the, it would have been a little bit better. Um, and uh, I made it, you know, I, I, what's that saying? You want to lead the horses to water? I led them to an empty lake, dude. Like, it was like... <laughs> It was horrible. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, the planning part, yeah, let's, you know, let's count that as a learning lesson. And, um, oh, yeah. shoot, there was something else I wanted to touch base on with that that uh, I don't know. Um, Maybe it'll pop up later. Yeah, it'll pop up later. But just don't don't get overexcited, you know, about yeah. these jobs. Like, you know, you need to be reasonable. Oh, the, what I was going to tell you is uh, you can't do it by yourself. And that was, like, a huge eye-opener because it was me – and a team of two other guys. And I mean, if we would have had the team that we have now, me plus the four guys, like that job would have done, been done in three, four days. I, I mean, granted what we know how to do, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Our portion of it. Yeah. Um, but every business, man, I, I think people go wrong sometimes in thinking that they're going to make more money by themselves. Yep. Like, I don't believe yep. in that at all. I yeah. mean, the you know, the quicker that you can get something taken out and share a piece with somebody, mm -hmm. you're on to the next one and you're on to the next one. Um, I think this isn't my expertise, but I, I think I see it a lot is when people try to flip houses, they try to do it themselves. Yeah. It's like, man, you buy a house, you want to get that thing gone in what, like 60 days or something like that. Good luck doing that by yourself. Yeah. Everybody's trying to, unfortunately, a lot of people buy into the thought that you can make money super quick by making these, these certain moves and doing these certain things and, and they'll get advertised as so on social media, on, on the internet and stuff. There's so many gurus, yeah, so many gurus, gurus. Yeah. you know, the real, the people that are really doing this and making things happen. They're doing it piece by piece, job by job. They're getting the experience and they're not sitting there talking about it all the time. Oh, I did this. This is how awesome I am. You could, this could be you. And so those people aren't, the real people aren't doing that. No, not at all. So those, those people, they're the egos bigger than their, they're bit like, yeah, gonna they're, ever be. <laughs> yeah. Let, let's just, I, I feel like they're good at making money, but they're not, they're not doing it. Like I couldn't sleep at night doing that. Mm -mm. I couldn't sleep at night doing that. Um, you know, it, it's the same thing. Like there's a lot of times, man, where I could really like, I, you know, customers sometimes tell me like, this is, this is my budget. Don't tell me your budget. Like don't tell anybody your budget. Yeah. Don't you, do that when you go car shopping either. Yes. Like, it, that was my next thing yeah. because they always ask you, well, what's your budget? Yeah. What do you make a year? What, how, how are, yeah. I mean, I'm not ashamed to talk about that kind of stuff, but when I'm yeah. trying to make a deal, that doesn't matter. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, that's, you know what I mean? You're putting the ball in their court. So, mm -hmm. you know, if I wanted to be sleazy, man, somebody tells me they got $12,000 to do their backyard. This job costs $3,700, but I know they have $12,000 to spend. People do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
people do that. Oh yeah. And uh, that's not right. That's just a, a situation. I would be just like those gurus. Like, yeah. man, there's so many people selling so many seminars and all this BS, dude. And it's like, man, you've never. What have you done? You've done none of this. Yeah. You know. And I, I've tried to listen to a lot of them because, like I said, I wanted to get out of the mind. So. I was trying to listen to these people, you know, they were smaller people, but on their YouTube channels, you know, I subscribed to a couple of them, mm -hmm. but dude, even I knew, like I'd never done this. I was trying to learn how to do it, but I'm like, okay, this cat does not know what he's doing either. And people are buying it, Yep. you know? Um, yep. Well, how did we get on that topic again? <laughs> oh, we were talking about failures and, and triumphs okay. is kind of how we did, but yeah. it, it, it's so, this is just moving so, so perfect to kind of like what I'm wanting to ask you. And my next thing is, advice to listeners pursuing a career close to yours or getting involved in the, to what you're doing. You've covered some stuff like be reasonable with the jobs. Don't get excited about all the money right up front. Know what you're getting into. What else would you say is a piece of advice you give them? That huge thing that I mentioned too is just getting a good team. Getting a good team. Um, I mean, it, it's a lot of work, man, to do by yourself. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work for my guys that do it, man, and hats off to them because – Man, those guys move. You yeah. know what I mean? They don't stop. And uh, you just got to treat your people right, too, man. Um, you know, if I have any advice, uh, you got to take it. So you almost got to take care of them before you take care of yourself. Because if you don't, you're not going to have them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, every, you know, if somebody's valuable, man, give them their worth as much as you can. Do you read John Maxwell? No. Because you're kind of talking about some of the leadership stuff he talks about. I'm, I've, got, I'm, I've, got a, I've got a book by him. Okay. And then I'm going to slide your way. That'd be and, cool, uh, yeah. It's all about leadership. And the most important thing about leadership is serving. You're serving your your employees and the people you work with. Yeah. That's what you're there for. You're not there to sit there and put them in a corner and, and boss them around and tell them all this nah. stuff. You're there to serve them to make sure <clears throat> that they're successful. Yeah, absolutely. That's and, it's huge. Um, you know, everybody's got to, you know, everybody's – everybody's got room to grow mm -hmm. i mean if somebody you know i want to do whatever i can to keep these guys because i know we have something special here yeah you know what i mean um one of them unfortunately i knew that this wasn't gonna be forever but um he's a hard worker and he literally just put in his two weeks today and i'm not mad at him you mm -hmm. know i um you know i didn't get to ask him too much because we were busy i was trying to you know hightail it everywhere around town but i was like Dude, like, you know, why would I be mad at you for that? Like, don't don't say that I'm going to be mad at you. Yeah. You gave me your two weeks, too. Like, what more? I would have been mad if it came Monday morning. Hey, I'm not showing up today. It's like, man, we got. But now I have two weeks to figure something mm -hmm. out. I have two yeah. weeks to put out that fire. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's more than enough time to figure out what I'm going to do. Um, I mean, I haven't thought about it, but I'm happy for him because he, you know, he went to school. He got his degree for what he wanted to do. And um, now he's doing it. Oh, yeah. You know, so. That's another thing too, as a business owner, man, don't ever make your guys feel like there's no room to grow. I want, I, I tell all my guys, man, like I want all of you guys to be driving badass cars. Like mm -hmm. I want you guys to have a nice house. Mm -hmm. You know, while I'm not quite there yet, those are my 100% honest intentions. Like, mm -hmm. you know, um, I want people to be like, oh, you work for SGM? Like, can you get me a job? Like, that's where I want to be, man. Yeah. Um, those are, you know, it's not un undoable. Just how much we've done last year how much we've grown the people we met the stuff we've learned we're just i mean we're on another level man like with this you know and i know it and i know it and uh it's just stuff that i can see i you know i'll be honest i really don't care what the competition's doing they're not me but we do look at their work and like i look at some of it i'm like man like you know and some people i help some people don't know better you yeah. know i have a he, he's a buddy of mine we met on instagram and he was very cordial when he introduced himself I was like hey man i'd like to meet up he was always cool and he was just kind of starting out like myself mm -hmm. and uh he already does awesome stuff man and there's just little tweaks to his game that you know and i share that with him there's enough work here in this town mm -hmm. i mean i'm not because <clears throat> i know what it's like man i reached out to people and i would try to reach out to people in other cities that do this yeah. just to see if they would help me out man, they wouldn't give me the time of day. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you can't pick up a book and learn how to, you can't pick up a book and learn how to run this business. No, you can't. Um, I just had to network. That's another thing, you know, network and don't burn your bridges. Obviously that's just a number one thing in life. Just mm -hmm. don't, you know, it, you know, there's too much money that you can make if you apply yourself to short somebody. Does that make sense? Am I coming off right? Like if, if, if you're going to short somebody over $20, 
when you could possibly make two hundred dollars with them mm -hmm. that's very stupid yeah you know what i mean so stealing stuff I, I you know i got rid of somebody because I, we had a disagreement like this stuff isn't free yeah you know this stuff while it is extra or whatever uh you know it either goes to the client or it goes back to the people we're subcontracting for yeah but this just this stuff shouldn't be coming back it's mm -hmm. accounted for mm -hmm. um you know, I have, I wish the person well, I like the individual a lot, but something like that, that was just a case that I, you know, had to bring up because it was over $160 that we separated ways. And like now, you know, we're, we got a lot of work ahead of us right now. And you know what I mean? I, I don't know. We were good before that. So let's yeah. just say $160 were ruined, you know, a good relationship. Yeah. And um, that, and that speaks volumes because that's all what they had with you was worth. Yeah, and I mean, have you ever seen that movie Bronx Tale? Mm -mm. So there's a point in time where like this, he's like, I guess like a mobster dude, this little kid, you know, comes into his life, they become friends, and the kid's chasing this dude up the street because he owes him $20. And the dude's been dodging him for weeks, and Sonny comes up and he's like, hey, uh, what are you doing? Why are you, why are you being stupid? And he's like, he owes me $20. And he's like, well, if $20 is all it took to get him out of your life, then he's not worth it. And like, that's so true. That stuck with me ever since I was a little kid. Like, man, if somebody's going to burn me over $10, $20, I don't, you know, they suck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. And it sucks to hey, suck. Good See yeah, you later. it sucks to suck, man, because, you know, that money's coming back. Money's money's weird, man. It always finds its way back. Wow. Wow. This has been great, man. I'm having a blast. Yeah, absolutely. You enjoying yourself? Oh, yeah. You going to come back? If you invite me, yeah. I'll I'd be, invite you. I'd, be uh, I'd be glad to. For sure. We're not done yet, though. No. I, I don't, I don't <laughs> want to stop this. This is going really well. I got time. What's a common myth about your career or your business? Everybody's out to screw you. You didn't let me finish? Everybody's out you to screw you. You already had that answer e ready. E everybody's shysty. Everybody, yeah, man, and that, that just sucks because, uh, you know, but to, if I'm being honest, going back to another reason why I started, that was one of the reasons why. And it was, you know, in the locker room at the mines. I saw this dude's shoes. Uh, they were all full of that blue stuff, you know, that, you know, that's just marker. It sprays the weeds. But I wanted to know where to get that. And, uh, you know, I was getting ripped off the prices that I was being given. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about it, but I knew. And I knew, I knew somebody could do better for people. You know, um, I knew I could do a better job for either a competitive price or potentially lower. Yeah. Um, and, uh. It was never my intention. Man, I can't tell you how many cleanup <laughs> jobs that, like, dude, my shifter, Nick, if you're listening to this, <laughs> you know, I did his yard for $100, and it took me three freaking days, dude, and just to p hand pick weeds. I hand picked weeds, man. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it took me three days to do that, and it, it was like, man, like, dude, for 100 bucks, <laughs> three days here, like, this yeah, is... Yeah, that's kind know, of a loss right there. Yeah, <laughs> and, and it is, man. Um but, you know, I knew that I would do a better job. I just, you know, it, it takes time, man. I couldn't expect just to jump in and, and expect to be the hot shot guy. But, you know, my thing was is I wanted to be different than everybody else. I wanted yep. to provide a good service um, and, you know, make people happy to spend. Nobody's happy to spend the money getting yard work, let's be honest. Yeah. Like, that sucks, dude. You know, if you have a huge job, you know what I mean? I'd rather spend that money, you know. There's better things to spend your money on. Yeah. But if I can be the guy that does a really good job and people are happy to pay that money at the end of it, seeing that they're genuinely like so thankful, they go and tell everybody they know, they pass out our cards, you know, they buy us pizza and like, you know, stuff yeah. like that. It makes you feel good. Like yeah. I hate to be cliche or, you know, cheesy or whatever, but like it's a little bit about the money, but a, a lot of times it feels really good when you're, you know, you're taking care of people and you're providing a good service. Yeah. You know, um, but that whole thing was just a reflection of our common myths about our job is, uh, you know, every time we roll up to so you, dude, you have no idea. Like people talk to me rudely a lot because it's like, man, you, you know, yeah, you know, you don't, you don't know anything about me. All you know is that I'm a landscaper and we're here to, uh, be sleazeballs or they think, you know, they're not going to call me back or, you know, stuff like that. And a common misconception with that is, I don't know, have you ever called landscapers before, like before me and you ever met? I'm fortunate. I have a, a friend that I work with. Mm -hmm. Her husband owns a landscape company, tree trimming thing. And okay. I, so I've, I I just contact him and he shows up. So but, you, but I'm going to tell you right now, uh, two years ago I was selling my house that I had bought. I bought like a starter house and 
uh, got it fixed up and I had some work that needed to be done on the roof in particular. And I called a company, spent my time talking to them. Yeah, we can take care of that. We'll set up this time, place, blah, blah. They're going to show up, right? They're, hey, we're going to be there at 8 a.m. on this day. Didn't show up. They didn't even show up. Didn't even call. Didn't even call. Didn't even text. Didn't even text. Yeah. Didn't even a email nothing. They just didn't show up. And I'm looking at my wife and I'm like, wow. Yeah. Man, this is going to be easy. And she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm going to get in the business world and fix that kind of problem. Yep. I'm going to be the guy that doesn't do that. Was I disappointed? Yeah. And I did. I kind of had like a, a thought on all contractors at that point that they're just not going to show up. Yeah. Now, granted, I didn't pay a deposit or anything like that because I've seen where oh, I've friends seen and family too. have paid a deposit, sometimes 50%. Yep. And then the people never show up and they never, never show They never show up. Yep. They take their deposit and they run with it because they pay them in cash. Yeah. Or it's like it, that stuff stresses me out. So I can see why people would feel that way. They're the edgy. They're edgy yeah. when I when I pull up. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're edgy. And they have, you know, they're every right yeah. to be that way. I understand it. Mm -hmm. So... I mean, I've worked customer service for, you know, a few years. You know, w what's funny is Fry's Grocery Store, they taught me a lot of, when I was 16, that was my mm -hmm. first, like, real job. Um, they taught me, like, more than I, like, thought that I was learning at that time, just because it was the way they wanted things run. Yeah. Um, and now it's like I implement those sometimes in day-to-day -day life, and it's like, man, like, I've had so many jobs, man. I've been across the board everywhere. Um, but that one, I kind of, I kind of hold it. You know, it helped me with my customer service. Yeah. And then I started selling parts at a dealership, uh, sold parts at an off-road shop. Um, and, I mean, granted, I wasn't very – I'll be honest, I wasn't good at those jobs at all. But what I was good at was keeping in contact with the clients. Yeah. Um, you know, there there was a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, shenanigans going on um, at that shop at that time, uh, which, you know – Anyways, it just it just made thing you know it, it was a it's a it's an awesome business. The owner I'm cool with, he's awesome. There was just a lot of stuff that he didn't you know, which was kind of sad. Yeah. Uh, and he caught on to that, and you know when I later heard that, I'm like, dude, that makes total sense of why this stuff wasn't shipped out for two weeks. Yeah. You know what I mean? But at that point in time, I was the guy that was taking all this heat on the phone calls. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to figure out where these parts are at, man. And you know what I mean, like. I don't know what to tell the customer other than, you know, I have to make this right. Like, what do you want yeah. me to do? do Welcome you to be in the filter. Yeah, what do you want me to do, man? And it, it was, you know, it, it was just a tough position to be in. Um, that job didn't work out. And, you know what I mean? It, it, I'm so cool with everybody. But yep. um, I'm sorry, man. I'm losing my train of thought again. It's been a long day. What were, what were, were You ready for the weekend? Yeah, I think so. You got jobs you got to do over the weekend, or are you? Uh, I typically don't work, but I'm going to be doing a lot of work this weekend. Are you? Yeah, I got. Yeah, I'm. I'm really behind right now, so I'm going to have to, to suck it up and. Well, I'm rooting for you, man. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I'm rooting for you. <laughs> You'll get through, man. Hey, if it makes you feel feel better, I got no days off. No, I'm running through the weekends doing uh, this, and that makes me feel yeah. a lot better. So I'll be riding is, dirt bike Sunday. So. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Not to make you feel bad, but you know, it makes me feel a little bit better and fortunate. So you you recently became a dad, huh? Yeah. Yeah, how how old is she? She's uh, about to be eleven months here, pretty soon. She, okay, so, so close, closing up on a year. We're gonna do this uh, bad dad jokes. Oh, uh, here quick. we go. You're gonna do two, and then I'm gonna do two, and it's out of this uh, this book I got here. Somebody gave it to me. I don't remember who. I feel bad. I don't remember who it was. Maybe it was my brother. I don't know. We're gonna have to edit this part out. <laughs> yeah, you can you can message me and be like, hey, what the hell, man? Or whoever whoever it was, I apologize and. I, I, I'll correct it somehow some down, sometime down the road, but it's exceptionally bad dad jokes. Um, I'm going to let you break the ice on this, so you can just Thanks. open it all, open it up and pick one and read it. Here we go. Oh, man. <laughs> what we got here? There's a picture of a mustache here. It's kind of funny looking. Uh, I'm not going to grow a mustache, so I don't think it's going to. Well, is it all? It is all it's that. All, it's all bad dad jokes, dude. <laughs> I'm just going to go with what's here in front of me. We're not going to keep you guys waiting. What did one avocado have to say to the other? Mm, what did one avocado have to say to the other? What do you think, Nereda? You, Nereda. Nereda. I got it right. Last. I don't know. What? This one's not going to be like super funny, but it's going to make sense if you think about it. So you got one half of the avocado. The other half says, I'm empty inside. Do you guys eat avocados? Yes. Yeah. You see why? 
you split it and the seed stays with one side. <laughs> okay, all right, that face. You got it. It's just not funny. <laughs> yeah. All right. Don't let me explain anything to you ever again. Just, right? <laughs> that look in your face right now is just He tried like, to justify the joke to us. I didn't, like, yeah. This is why. <laughs> What you were looking at, it was just a, a, okay. I'm getting what that stare was now. All right, f- <laughs> find another one. I mean, I'm scared to read another no, one. No, go for it. Just <laughs> read it, you know, and we'll po- we'll try to guess it. If we don't, just hit us with it. <laughs> Wait, what is? <laughs> hold on, hold on. What is that? It's... All right. Um, why did the girl smear peanut butter on the road? No. Why? <laughs> to go with the traffic jam. What is this? Who gave you this book? I want to talk to this person right now. Well, I, f- I forgot who it was, so I can't help you with who it was right now. Man, if, if I find out and remember, I'll let you know and you can hit them up. But I don't remember who it was. Oh, if I could find what I just saw in like the next three. Oh, never mind. It's not what I thought it was. That's your turn, man. All right, here we go. You pulled this out specifically for me because I was going to be here. The dad joke book. Yeah, because you're a dad. I'm actually going to be a dad soon, so it's a Congrats, point. dude. That's awesome. Thanks, man. Do you guys know what you're having yet? A girl. Nice. Yeah, it's, baby girl. I mean, I'm only a girl dad, but it's, uh, it's, I love it. All right, here, you ready? This one's kind of just like a, like a two-line thing. It's not like a real joke, I guess. I don't know if these are all at all real jokes. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> this book is a joke if you think of it. <laughs> all right, Sorry, go. whoever bought this. I'm kidding. I'm terrified of elevators. I'm going to start taking steps to avoid them. Oh my god! <laughs> She's over there, like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here cracking my knuckles, like, man, what, what, what do we got coming up next right now? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, someone gonna pop up from behind this curtain? I'm getting thing? anxiety. Like, <laughs> like, it's like, man, can we just get something? He's like, I totally regret coming to the show. I'm not coming back. <laughs> can we not air this, please? <laughs> what did the ocean say to the shore? I see you. Nothing. It just waved. Oh God! Oh no! <laughs> and like I'm out. My, my, no, no. no, dude, just bleep out what I said. Just pretend I was cussing or something, because I was. <laughs> you want to try one more? Uh, you want to go for one more? All right, I'll all try right. one if you try one. How about that? One more. I'll feed you one. You try to guess it. Either of you can try and guess it. I'm down with that. Okay. That way, I'm not the only one looking uh, ridiculous here. Okay, this one is, I am only a social vegan. Why? Guess. Because you, uh, no one wants to hang out with you? Because <laughs> you talk about being a vegan all the time? I avoid meat. But it was M-E-E-T. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's kind of one of those ones you got to read. Yeah, I think so. I screwed that Let's up. Let's do one more. All one right. more. Hold on, let me You're like sh- deep in the book. You know, there's like I just, uh, 50 I just, pages in front of I mean, I just don't want to pull. I didn't mean to pull that one, but, you know, I wanted a better, like, No guess. offense to vegans. I didn't mean anything by it. It's just a joke thing. I, we didn't I, write this book. I, I, I have friends that are vegans that are cool. Well, one of my guys is a vegan. Does he talk about it all the time? Uh, he, does, he's, he doesn't overbear us with it, but, I mean, like, <laughs> it, it's not annoying by okay. any means. Good. You know what I mean? Like, we actually try a lot of his food, and it's, it's good. really good. It's yeah. good, right? Yeah. And you know what? He doesn't give us crap for not being vegan. No. We all go to lunch together. He gets the vegan options, and he doesn't give us crap. Like, you know, Sweet. they make fun of him a lot, but he's a good sport about up. it. Yeah, he's a good sport about it. But uh, let's see. Uh, all right, here we go. No, you're not. You're, it's your turn. I, that wasn't back even and a forth, question, back though. And for, yeah. That was a statement. Find the section where it has the question. Well, let's see here. <laughs> this one's so stupid. I'm gonna read. It. Here we go. Ready? How did the hipster burn his tongue? Nothing. He drank his coffee before it was cool. <laughs> I actually kind of. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of enjoyed that. Like <laughs> that's a. Uh... That's cheese, but that's kind of uh, on point there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, we're done with the dad jokes. We'll save that for the next person. That... We'll save that when we get some drinks, man, and yeah. we'll see if it gets any funnier. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, whoever bought that book. <laughs> all right, man, how do people connect with you and your business? What's the best way? Uh, probably 520 668 
Okay. Call or text. Call or text. That'd probably be the best way. Best way. That uh, Facebook. Um, I'm not super uh, crazy with Instagram with yeah. with uh, my work. Um, I just don't feel like there's like a huge following on Instagram. You know, there's there's not a like a there's not a really good legitimate following on there. Like it's not robotic. There's a lot of art of AI that's on yeah. Instagram as opposed to. Facebook. Yeah. And I, I mean, people like you get on Instagram and, you know, you want to see sports, you want to see, you know, what your, your hobbies, you know, there's not a lot of following for that unless people are looking to get some something done. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Facebook um, email is uh, Samson's GM at Gmail. Um, again, 520-668-2281. Cool. Uh, I still would like to work with you on that website. Yeah. So we'll, um, figure, we'll figure it out. We'll get something that looks good for your company and get that all put together and the contact info that he relayed here to connect. We'll make sure that we put that inside of the, the context description of the, the, uh, the podcast we've done today. So you guys, the listeners can find them and contact them if you need something done with your yard. Like I expressed earlier, uh, the, <laughs> I didn't know that you needed to make sure that there wasn't sun rays just destroying your turf, but uh, I know now. Yeah. So now, you know, which is something that you can learn from this podcast on top of a lot of other things that Sam has expressed to us and shared with us today and we're gonna call it a podcast we're done it's friday uh go get the cold drinks if you can go eat a nice meal with your family do whatever you want to do race dirt bikes sam if that's what you want to go do you know what i mean so yeah and that we're gonna call it yeah, thank you for uh, being here ltd media is the host we appreciate you listening and thank you very much